everybody. Glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. So, you know, I was going about life as you do, minding your own business, when Ben told me about an article that had popped up online to do with houseplants. Now, this is a local article, so it made it all the more fun. I will get into it in just a moment, but I thought it'd be fun to read it because honestly, it just, it's, it's ridiculous. So I actually started reading it and then I stopped reading it because it was so stupid. I just had to show you guys. Before we start today, I know I'm going to get questions. I know I'm gonna get questions because I don't usually do this. I did it. I didn't think it would work. It looks absolutely snatched on camera. People are gonna ask me what is on my eyes. This is what is on my eyes. This is last year's um, Pat McGrath limited edition palette, I think. That's what's on my eyes. But honestly, just go for anything iridescent and purple and you'll probably get there. Just in case anyone wants to know, because I know someone's gonna say something, because this looks great. Why don't I wear purples more often? I've never worn purples on my eyes, but this looks excellent. So. Anyway, so this is a local article produced about essentially plant prices and finding plants in big box stores, which is something I've talked about on this channel before. So this article specifically that I'm going to quote to you today is from the Manchester Evening News. Now, Manchester is where I live in the UK. If you do not know, it's north of London. It's not London. I know a lot of people that don't live in the UK think there is only London. There is not. There are many places and Manchester happens to be one of them. Manchester Evening News went with the title Little and B&Q have accidentally been selling plants worth £4,000 for £10. Okay, dying to get into this one. For anyone in America that doesn't know what those stores are, a little store is very similar to a Walmart, maybe. It's like a cheaper Walmart. And I guess B&Q, you guys would have Home Depot. So that's the kind of stores we're talking about in case you're an American, you have no idea what this is. Obviously, I'll be reading this off my phone for the entire video, but honestly, this is, this is, this is a thing. Right, so, article begins. Supermarket giant Little and retailer B&Q have accidentally been selling rare plants worth thousands of pounds at reduced prices. So if you picked up all sorts of greenery in your local Little, B&Q or others, you might be sitting on a fortune. What supermarkets don't know is that small naturally occurring variations in common plants can make them extremely valuable. And what's more, these variations are sometimes mistaken for disease and the shops sell the plants at a reduced price. Now that is true. Nothing that has been said here so far is ridiculous. That is totally true. Um, supermarkets tend not to know what they've got. We all know this, and I've said this before on my channel. It's a really good idea to go into a box store because you can sometimes find variegated plants. So I get it. That's good. Nothing untrue here so far. It's even true about plants being discounted for being ill as well. And fun fact, a lot of nurseries like years ago, like 10 years ago, that say produced Monstera, right? A great example. Nurseries that produced Monstera were throwing away variegates because they were deemed to be, you know, bad stock, ill stock, defective stock. So I bet they're kicking themselves now. But this totally happens all the time, totally normal. My complaints have not yet begun, <sighs> but they will, they will. So we continue. Some of the plants are sold by the shops for around £10, but can sell for a far higher price online for even just a small part of it, like a left or stem, assuming they mean leaf or stem. Of course, there is no guarantee that your local shop will have any rare plants in stock. Well, yeah, but it serves as a good reminder to have a look next time you visit. Again, true, no issues here. That is not my issue with this article, believe me. Here are some of the rare plants you can find. So again, what they're saying here is absolutely true. Um, again, you can find things cheap. Yes, you can get lucky. And the reason you can get lucky in doing this, in buying plants from, you know, big box stores or whatever else, is because of the way plants are produced. Now, the way these plants are produced is via tissue culture, which essentially means, if you don't know what that is, I do have a full video all about that below. I will link it for you in the description. Tissue culture is the process where you take a small section of a plant. It could be a piece of leaf. It's usually a piece of stem though. And you put it in special solution and you essentially clone that plant several times. You then take those and you clone them several times and it's exponential, right? So the plant will go through a bit of a journey where that's done. These plants are cloned without roots, which I realize is a bit weird but they're done without roots and then once you have enough quantity that you want you switch your medium out and that medium will be formulated for root growth as opposed to the first medium that they were sat in which is more for cloning the plant so this process probably takes a few months but you can get 
thousands of plants rather than propagating normally, which, you know, by cutting the stem or whatever, you're not going to get anywhere near that much. But when this happens, there are certain genetic mutations that are bound to take place because you're cloning things and things are just getting a bit, a bit weird. Obviously, it depends on the amount of mother plants you're using. So if you make a thousand plants from one plant, you're far more likely for things to get a bit sticky further down the line than if you make a thousand plants out of 10 plants, for example. I digress. But then the article goes into examples of things you can find, and this is where my issues kind of start. So the first example we have here is variegated Monstera deliciosa. Um, I'd like to point out at this point that there's no pictures in this article. Obviously, I'm showing you paragraphs or bits of paragraphs or whatever it is I've decided to show you. This article has no images, but we'll get back to that later on. Variegated Monstera deliciosa. Perhaps the most common plant to find in any shop, the Monstera deliciosa is more commonly known as Swiss cheese plant because of the holes in its leaves. Yes, true. To civilians, that's what it's known as. And by the way, I like to use this term for non-plant people or just people outside of like an area area that is quite in-depth. Like, for example, when I was taught programming in university, our lecturer would call people that weren't programmers or weren't really computery people, he would call them civilians. So I'm probably going to use that term for non-planty people because it's going to become very evident throughout this article that there is not a plant person in sight that wrote this. And while a regular green plant isn't worth much, a variegated monstera is very rare. Some of these plants developed white markings on their stems and leaves, occasionally putting out a whole white leaf. Well, yeah, I guess. Because the signs can be subtle in young plants, shops often mix them up with the plain variety and sell them for a tenner. Yes, it's not really the shop doing it, but okay. Even a single branch of the plant, this is where it's crazy, right? Even a single branch of the plant could end up costing thousands. With Etsy's most expensive listed at £4,562.18. Very specific, I suspect there has been a conversion. And as little as a five inch stick, very odd, sells on Facebook Marketplace for £1,399. Spot the rare beauty by looking for white lines on the stems or a constellation like pattern on the leaves. There is Definitely some confusion here. Let me just say, honestly, I'm absolutely baffled. And it was at this point that I had to check the date that the article was written, which I will get onto in just a second. The article, as I mentioned before, contains no pictures of these plants. So already they're trying to say, well, this is how you find this plant. This is what it looks like. And the description is entirely inaccurate anyway. So I don't really know what this, this author was going for. I need pictures in a plant where you say to me, hey, one of these is not like the others. It's kind of what we need. But anyway, there's a lot to unpack here. I think we can all agree. Where, where did they get that value from? Where did they get that value from? Because honestly, as far as I know, I don't think variegated Monstera were ever worth that. Like ever, even at their rarest. Someone might be able to correct me on that. I don't know. I don't think they were ever selling for that. Ever. At their worst, at their highest peak. I have no idea, but I don't think so. Variegated Monstera isn't very rare, as quoted. It's not even really rare. It's honestly, it's borderline uncommon. And I know you're probably thinking, well, obviously this article was written ages ago. No, it wasn't. It was written on the 24th of January, 2022. So I don't know what's going on here. Four and a half thousand for a branch of elbow. The five inch stick. Does anyone even sell five inch sticks? Chunks? It's very specific, isn't it? It's very specific. But it's like, where did they even get these listings from? Because I've never seen them sold for that at any point. The only time I've ever seen these up for sale for that amount of money are people that are essentially trying to scam you into thinking this is like a super rare unicorn when it isn't. So essentially what this article seems to have done is taken scammer prices and posted them as gospel. <laughs> Journalism. And yes, yeah, spot the rare beauty by looking for white lines on the stems or a constellation pattern on the leaves. I think clearly two different plants here are being confused. One is clearly the Thai constellation because it looks nothing like the Monstera variegata albo as we know it. I know a lot of people would struggle to tell the difference, but guess what? They wouldn't if you included pictures. Anyway, moving on to the next plant, shall we? The variegated Monstera adansonii. Variegation is all the rage among plant lovers and Swiss cheese plant's smaller cousin is even more valuable. Okay. These plants are hungry and need to be fed throughout the winter, unlike other house plants. If they're not, they develop white spots that cause shops to sell them for cheap. But these spots are easily confused with the beginnings of variegation, which has the same telltale white stripes on the stem as the Deliciosa. On eBay, the most expensive Ansonii for sale is listed at £3,699. And remember, this article was written in January of this year. What on earth? And if you don't want to part with your plant, a single leaf can sell for as much as £1,000. £533.39 on Etsy. Are you having a laugh? There is so much to unpack in this one, it's not even funny. First of all, 
first of all, we have a really bizarre mention about the fact that they offer like some weird care tip for this plant. It almost makes me think that the person that wrote it, this article only has an Adansoni eye. And that is it. Because it's really weird to me that they would even offer a care tip. Because it doesn't make any sense. Why? That's so random. They've developed white spots that cause shops to sell them for cheap. Are you talking about viruses? I think you might be talking about viruses. It's not super clear, to be honest. It's really not. White spots are easily confused with the beginnings of variegation. Yeah, I, I feel like they are. I feel like they're talking about virus versus variegation. By this point, I'm obviously very curious. And I did look this up on Etsy because I wanted to understand just where these prices are from. And what happens is, if you just go on Etsy and you type in, you know, Monstera Adansonii or whatever else, and you look at the hits, you will get very sensible results, right? Because as we all know, Monstera Adansonii Varagata, or whatever you want to call it, is reasonably cheap at the minute. I'm sure I just sold one for like £150, like yesterday, or something like that. They're very, very cheap for a couple of leaves or whatever have you. They are certainly not. What did they fucking say it was? Yeah, one and a half thousand. But the point is, when you, on a default search on Etsy, any anyone that's researching for this video, you just type it in and then that's what comes up. What they've had to do, because I looked at this, what they've had to do to get those hits is to go, now, bollocks to what's relevant, I'm just going to use that little drop down menu and I'm going to go by highest price. And then, then you get the hits. Yeah, <sighs> it, it's, whoever has written this knows nothing about houseplants. I can't help but feel like this article is doing what a lot of media tends to do with us plant folk, and they basically make us look a bit crazy and a little bit unhinged. Uh, I'm not loving that, to be honest. I'm not super mad, because, I mean, I think we're all used to it at this point, especially if you're in, like, the rare plant market, but they're kind of making us look a bit, a bit dumb here, I think. Anyway, I digress once again, let's continue on. With the philodendron white princess or the white knight. That's unusual. I thought they would have said white wizard or white knight, but let's, let's, let's carry on. With over 400 species of philodendron in the world, shops might struggle to differentiate between them. And just like the monsteras, there's a philodendron with white leaves worth hundreds. The philodendron white princess and white knight look very similar with glossy green leaves and white lines that might be mistaken for disease or damage by clueless shops. On it! <laughs> on Etsy, these beauties sell for as much as £4,216.82 for a white knight, and the white princess is on sale on various sites for roughly £400. What? on earth. I'll start by saying, look, I know things can get confused in shops, but when stuff is of this nature, it's not going to get confused in shops. It's not going to randomly end up in shops because there's a whole big chain that takes place. And in order for these items to become mass produced enough so that regular shops and big chains will buy them, they are like pennies per unit, right? They're not loads of money. I'm not saying big box stores don't get good stuff in, because yes, they do occasionally. But at the moment, big box stores are still just playing with that concept because they don't really know how the market for rare plants works. They see it and they're dabbling in it a little bit, right? So you only see select plants getting kind of put into that situation. Th th these two plants are not going to rock up in a big box store that I think, not without them being deliberately placed there. And if they are deliberately placed there, they will have a deliberate price and there will be a deliberate reason. For example, Pink Princess at the minute, I found for the other day for £12.99, which I'm assuming is less than $20. It's nothing. It was a small plant, but you get my point. That's not there by accident. They had to be ordered from a supplier that is making these en masse. You feel me? These things don't happen. Now, in the case of Monstera, yes, you can find the variegates, right? Because that's no, that's less normal. But in this case, this plant isn't a mutation that makes it look like that. That is the plant. You see what I'm saying? That is the plant. So it's a little bit different. But I tell you what, with over 400 species of philodendron in the world, shops might struggle to differentiate. I tell you what, they wouldn't if you put pictures in the article. Also, the disparity on price was really interesting. I don't know personally what these two plants go for. I think I have... What do I have in? I think I have White Knight in my shop, but it's looking a bit scraggly, to be honest. But <laughs> I'm certainly not going to sell it for 4.2k. So you've got 4.2k and £400. What? How are these people finding these things, honestly? I'm all for people getting into this hobby, by the way, and doing this, but this just... This ain't it. This really ain't it. Oh, here we go. The Pink Princess Philodendron. Shall we see what they say about that? So, the Pink Princess Philodendron, or PPP... Oh, they know the lingo. That's very interesting that you know the first thing about this plant. Well, let's, let's see. I've got, I've got high hopes. I don't have high hopes. <laughs> I don't have any hope at all. The PPP is very similar to the White Knight and White Princess, but has pink variegation instead of white. Um... All right, fine. Civilians, you've got to remember, it's fine. You might see it in shops because it's easy to propagate and the pink colour looks stunning. Um, 
Yeah, it's, again, it's not rocking up in little though, is it? But it can take a while for it to show as more than a shadow on a baby plant, hence the potentially low price. A mature plant goes for as much, oh my God. A mature plant goes for as much as 2,228 pounds on Etsy. And a single leaf cutting could easily earn you 200 pounds. Where are you getting this info? Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Has a pink princess ever sold for that? in the history of ever. Because honestly, if you know something, tell me, because we can all look at it in the comments and be like, what the fuck, I did not know that. I've never heard of that. A single leaf for £200, I can almost believe it when you take into account COVID prices when people went wild. So I can almost believe that. But again, this is over a year out of date at minimum, and those are the prices that make sense, to be honest, because they're not that much money anymore. They're now in big box stores, as in like, genuinely. So they're even kind of saying it anyway. You might see it in shops because it's easy to propagate. Okay, yeah, that because it's become mass produced. Oh, oh no, I've just seen the last plant. Is it the last plant? The last plant on the list that they're going to talk about. And now, now they've really gone and pissed me off. Now they've really gone and done it. Would you like to see the last plant on the list? Ah, all right then. Let's go. The Monstera Oblique. Perhaps one of the rarest house plants out there. The Monstera Oblique's fragile leaves can be mistaken for pest damage. Possibly, yeah. In fact, you'd be forgiven for thinking this was an Adamsonia that's been a caterpillar's dinner. Yeah, alright, okay. We'll take it. But a genuine oblique is amongst the most sought after by plant enthusiasts and could earn you some serious, serious money. A single leaf, here we go. A single leaf is on sale on Etsy for £1,590 and on eBay for £1,250. Guys, get yourself onto eBay. You'll get some sweet deals. Sweet deals. Over on Facebook Marketplace, a small plant goes for £1,000. Again, this information is approximately one year out of date. I think that's quite accurate to say it's one year out of date. They don't go for that now. I can't remember exactly what I sold mine for recently. So, <laughs> right, listen, listen. Listen, I know Bleaker is less rare than what it was. And I tell you now, I'm no stranger to getting crap on the internet for that original video that I posted on Oblique. Why? Because people don't look at upload dates. People don't seem to understand that what was true of, what was it, three or four years ago is not necessarily true now because things change. But never mind. again, I digress. I digress. But let me tell you something, you're still not accidentally going to find it in fucking garden centers. It still has a value. It still has enough value to really, it's, it still has more value than a pink princess. It has more value than a variegated monstera. It has more value. These things don't accidentally make their way there. And I'll tell you why, taken into account, even if someone randomly dropped an oblique into all of those plants, I'm telling you now, wouldn't survive it. It wouldn't survive it. Now you can grow a bleaker quite tough. I know I have. I know a few people that I've sold a bleaker to have grown it very tough and it can be done. But generally speaking, guys, these plants are not going to last the test that hardware stores put them through. Not to mention they literally won't end up there. But let's just say they did. A bleaker need a lot of humidity. They need a lot of stuff. They need a lot of feeding. They're animals, honestly. If anyone has one, you'll know that they're a bit, they're, they're kind of like a pet more than a plant, to be honest. They're a bit ravenous. They are not going to end up in a box store of any kind for I don't know how long. Honestly, I'm going to call it now. They're never going to end up in a box store. And it's got nothing to do with rarity. It's to do with the fact that we already have Adansonii. A lot of people can't tell the difference. We knew that when the Oblique video came out and then more people were like, oh, is this an Oblique? And it was quite apparent that a lot of people, you know, once you see it, you see it, don't get me wrong. But until that point, you can't tell the difference. So why would we take out a plant that is very cheap to produce, it's mass produced, it's hardy, it's stood the test of time, protocol is there, great supply is going, and it still sells very well. Why would you swap it or add in a plant that's basically, it looks the same, except it's so much difficult. It's so much more difficult. No one is going to want those things growing in a household environment, sending out runners. It's not attractive to the, you know, the run of the mill civilian houseplant market, right? It's just not. I'm calling it, guys. It's never going to be in big box stores because there is no point in putting it in big box stores. You feel me? It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. It's not even going to happen by accident. It's not going to happen. I don't know how to tell you this. It's not going to happen. And again, this isn't me fucking gatekeeping the rarity of stuff. It's just how the industry works. But quite honestly, like a basic internet search by the author of this article would have would have cleared up Literally all of these things, right? And I, I don't mean anything to do with me or anything like that, but literally anything, any internet article, surely must have got this right at some point. We're going to have to check on some other internet articles, guys, because I can't believe this is the information that is out there. An internet search would have cleared that shit right up. <laughs> Honestly, it would have. 
Um, it's quite ironic that they've listed a bleaker on here as having the lowest price because it's actually the most rare out of all of them, or at least has been, or however you want to think about it. So I find that quite interesting because they're like bigging it up being like, oh my God, and it's just not, <laughs> it's just not. Which is a great thing, of course, is now accessible. I'm again, not shitting on that at all. That's it. That's the end of the article, by the way. There, there is no, no summary, no nothing to take, no, you know, the rare house by market is booming. It's really coming up online, check it out, and nothing, just nothing. It literally, that is the last word in the article I checked. This could be the worst house plan article I've ever read so far, in terms of being so out of touch, not in terms of the opinions expressed, in terms of it being so out of touch. I've never read anything so stupid. What is the point of this article? It's like, hi, here's all these hidden gems you could have. What are they, you might ask? Well, I'm not going to show you what they are. You better look it up yourself, because guess what? I couldn't be bothered to. <laughs> Listen, right? No matter, no matter how far you're into plants or not into plants, if you happen to have stumbled across this video, there are rare plants out there that are worth this much, right? But the market fluctuates a lot. So you need to make sure if you want to ever buy these things, if maybe this is why you've stumbled on this video, maybe you're a regular viewer, I don't know. But if you stumbled on this video, the plants listed in this article that I've covered today are not worth that much. They are significantly lower. You can get a cutting of a variegated Monstera. I imagine it's something like, at least in Europe, it's probably about 60 pounds, 60 euros. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's gone up a little bit. But it's certainly not for the thousands. Um, you can buy chunks. I imagine they are definitely in double digits, or so they should be. Oblica, again, cheaper. Adansonii, very cheap. Dirt cheap. Do not pay a lot of money for them. Um, do your research. And I tell you what, don't do what nobody does and go on Etsy or eBay and search by most expensive. What? I don't want to have idiots running into garden centres trying to flog plants like this to people that don't know any better. It's part of what we try and you know, counteract. It's what I try and do on this channel. I try and say, you know, what things are worth. I can't give proper numbers because things fluctuate so much. And I do try and tell you that, guys. I do give approximate values for things where I can. But obviously, case in point, the oblique, things just aren't worth that much anymore. And then, you know what, in three years' time, when people get bored, it might be worth that much. You know what I mean? But I don't want to see idiots running into garden centers trying to flog these plants. It's exactly the same reason why I don't agree with people trying to sell variegated things from TC that are like thousands of pounds. And it's like, that's silly. Because if you understand how TC works, which is tissue culture, by the way, my apologies, I keep abbreviating it. But if you understand how that works, you'll know that the chance of a variegated anything in a batch of millions of plants is high enough they're going to come out. So when you sell things like, the best example I can obviously come up with is Raphidophora tetrasperma. And it's like, why is it thousands when there are hundreds of these things, hundreds of these things in Thailand alone? Alone. It's bollocks, honestly. And I'm not here for it. I'm not here for people falsely inflating things. And I'm honestly saying that as honestly as I can as a seller. I'm still not for people doing this sort of stuff. I don't agree with it because if you sell a plan for a thousand, that's a lot of money, let alone more than that. Like we need some transparency in the industry and we need people just behaving with some decency, I think. And I don't think this article helps that is what I'm getting at. I don't think it helps at all. Plus it portrays us a lot as being just crazy. Now I'm not saying prices didn't get to that point sometimes and for some things, yes, but Jesus Christ, honestly, it's, it's a lot, is it not? It's a lot. I just want people to be well informed before making purchases. And again, I'm saying that knowing full well, you all know I am a seller. So I just want people to be well informed. And that's why I don't like articles like this. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking this super, super, super seriously. I'm taking it tongue in cheek, but there is kind of a serious note to take from it a little bit. And that's just that we just need more transparency on things like this. We really do. One ounce of research would have fixed these prices. One tiny bit. But I tell you what, I looked at the author. And the author is Rachel Pugh, who it says here is aligned with fashion, beauty, money, and shopping. That makes a lot of sense. I don't know if this was a slow day at the office and that's why she wrote this, because no offense to you, Rachel, you don't know anything that you're talking about. Not even 1%. You didn't even put images in. I don't even think you knew how to ID the plants. So you didn't put any images in. To bring it back, the crux of the article is valid. The crux of it saying, check for plants in your big box stores, you might find a hidden gem. Yes, true. But this is massively inflated to get people's attention. Of course it is. It's journalism. I get that. Don't worry. I do get it. But I did actually, I've just looked this up, by the way, and I've Googled rare house plants and I've like clicked on news on Google. And everyone has written this same article. Now, I don't actually know who wrote it first. I'm not looking it up as of recording this video because I don't care enough. But I think we've got the Daily Express writing it. We've got Bristol Live. We've got the Chronicle Live. Everyone's picking up on it. I did click on one other article. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was Daily Express. And it did have like one picture. 
They had a picture of the variegated Monstera and then they had no pictures of anything else. I don't think so. People are struggling in the media for pictures. Anyway, guys, I'm suitably annoyed. I'm suitably out of breath, but I actually quite enjoyed reading through this with you. If you'd like me to do some more of these, feel free to suggest so in the comments because so far that is the most out of touch plant article I've read, but I'm gonna bet there are a lot more out there and I would quite like to read them and basically rip them apart. So if you've got any you'd like me to, please let me know. I don't think my channel allows you dropping links because I get a lot of spam a lot of the time. So I think if you just write what the article is and where it is, I might be able to find it. I'm sure we'll come up with something. If you find something that's good and other people jump in on it, I'm sure you can guide me to the articles in some way. But yeah, that was, that was, that was interesting. Journalism. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I realize it's a little bit different, but I just thought, what the heck? There are no rules here. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. So if you like this video, please leave a like down below. If you'd like to see any more of my content, I have a wide range of stuff, including being transparent about prices and plants and their pitfalls, then please consider subscribing to my channel. That's it for this week's video, and I will see you in the next one. Also, if you can get this palette, I would advise it. See you next week, guys. Bye.